This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We stand, rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our services at Center City Baptist Church. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had talked about it isn't amazing how God can take an ordinary day and make it extraordinary. He's done it again today. We have Brother Dallas here with us this morning. If y'all haven't had a chance to visit with him, he's back. Linda's back. Rita's back. Um, just so much going on in our little church this year, and sitting here thinking about that um, and all that has happened and all that we've come through, if y'all would indulge me, I would like for you to join me in prayer as we give thanks to God for his oversight, for his leadership, and for everything he's brought us through. So if you would, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so humbled as a church to come before you this morning to thank you for your loving care, for your watchfulness, for your protective hedge of protection around Center City. Lord, we've had a lot of people face adversity this year with their physical health and family problems and so much going on, Lord. And you've been with us every step of the way. You brought our pastor back with us today, Lord. You brought him through healing and recovery and allowed him to be back with us today after many long weeks of physical therapy and and he's here today, Lord, and we're so thankful that he's back with us. And I think also of others, Lord, who have you brought through periods of sickness and healing. I think of our brother Larry Pafford. I think of Derwayne Head and the healing and the recovery you've brought to their lives. I think of Rita Pafford and the healing you're bringing to her. Our own little Elizabeth, Lord what you've done in her life, and Mac and Cheryl McKelvey, Diane Phillips, and the list just goes on and on, and yet you have been faithful to put your hand upon each and every member of our church, Lord, to heal them and bring them back to us. There are no words to express our gratitude, how humbled we are, Lord, that you care for us and love us that much and that you've held us together through these times of trial and tribulation. Be with us through this service today, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to you and let us worship you fully in spirit and truth. We thank you again for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been through a lot as a church. And Brother Dallas will be back up here next week, so... Is my last opportunity, I just wanted to say thank you and also to commend you as a church for your faithfulness, for your prayers, for your love, for your support. It doesn't matter who's in the pulpit. We've had Dallas, we've had me, we had Butch, we had Brother Zach, we've had people here, but it's your heart for God that brings you back. It's your faithfulness to him and to worship that brings you back. It's not the people that stand up here. We kind of work for you. We kind of work for God. We're here to assist you and to help you along the way. So it really doesn't matter who's up here. It matters for y'all because if y'all are not here, there is no church. But your heart for God has really shown in these last few weeks with the pastor being out and yet you were still faithful to come. So... It wasn't me I was coming to see. It was your faithfulness and your heart for God that brought you back week after week and will continue to bring you back in the future. So we look forward to things getting back to normal. I'm not going to say new normal because I don't like that word. Um, it's been different. It's been times of adversity. But uh, I think we've persevered as a church. 
and you are to be commended on your faithfulness and your love and your support of Center City. That's why we all still come here, because we love each other, we care for each other, and it's shown, and it's brought us through this time of, of trial, and I just see bright days ahead in the future, so uh, thank you for supporting me. And, uh, and for supporting our church. Thank you for your prayers for Brother Dallas. I know he appreciates them. I know Larry and Reed appreciate them. I know Daryl appreciates them. I know Elizabeth appreciates all the prayers for their healing. So, enough rambling. Let's worship the Lord. Yeah, they should. We're going to sing number 533, He Lives. Will you please all stand while we sing this song? I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ my Savior lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see His loving care. My heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ my Savior lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, Christ Savior to impart. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, live up to your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah, to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. And other than so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ saves us lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Number 533. The next song is number 485. 485. Y'all can all be seated. <laughs> or you can stand up. <laughs> Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high, sword of honor, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he'll he lead to land. is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey, for to the mighty conflict in his, his glorious day, ye 
rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand is his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Sing where the cause or danger be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day of noise of be the with the king of glory shall reign eternally okay now you may be seated Our next hymn for this morning is going to be number 447, Trust and Obey. Number 447. Delights of his love, 
until all of the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, and he sins we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey So this morning, I'd like to finish up our series on spiritual warfare. Didn't know we were doing a series on spiritual warfare, did you? I didn't either. (laughs) But when I look back, you know, a couple couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about the whole armor of God and how to prepare yourself for battle. And then Guy came in and gave his wonderful testimony. And then last week, we talked about preventive maintenance, how to maintain yourself and your relationship with the Lord to fight those battles. So this morning, to end it all up, I want to talk about something that we call in the Army a warrior ethos. And you may think, well, what has that got to do with church? Well, as we've said before, we are at war. It's a spiritual war, and we battle every single day that we draw a breath on this earth will be a battle. A lot of the songs, Stand Up for Jesus, mentioned Jesus leading his armies. We are in the army of the Lord. So why not have a warrior ethos, a code that belongs to us as Christians? Uh, The army has one, and it's rooted in the army values, which, uncoincidentally, are not much different than our Christian values. The army has seven values. They It's the acronym leadership, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. You need all those to be a Christian, don't you? You definitely need personal courage in today's troubled world. You need to have integrity if you want to reach others for Christ. So the ethos is founded on the premise for the army that service to our country is an honor and a duty as a citizen. It also could be said the same for being a Christian. Service to our God and King and to his church. But such service calls for self-sacrifice. You wouldn't think that just simply being a Christian that it would call for self-sacrifice. But we have to take up our cross daily, don't we? We have to sacrifice those things We are no longer that old man. We are a new man. We no longer do the things we used to do. We belong to something larger than ourselves. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to his holy church. And we all have a part to play in that. Jesus himself gave us what we would call our marching orders. In Matthew 28, chapter, verse 19, I know it's familiar to a lot of y'all, but this is from the mouth of Jesus himself. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, 
I am with you always to the end of the age. Simple orders that every soldier gets that we must carry out as Christians. Go out into all the world, all nations, not just Mills County, not just Texas, not just the United States, but all nations. And the good thing is, with this commander-in-chief, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So no matter what we face, uh, Jesus himself is with us. So the first part of the word ethos is, I will always place the mission first. There's your mission. As a Christian, it's our job to spread the good news of the gospel to each and every person that we meet. And that was given to us by Jesus himself. It's not negotiable. That's your order, number one. Always place the mission first. Do we always do that? No. I wish I could say that I did, but I don't. We get caught up in the world. The devil tries to trip us up and sidetrack us and take our attention off of what we're doing. So it's hard to always place the mission first. But that's what we're called to do. The second line of the warrior ethos is, I will never accept defeat. We've said before, we may lose some battles along the way, but the war has already been won. Christ has finished it. It's over. It's done. There is no losing in the end. The war is won. So we have that great hope and that assurance that helps us to keep fighting every day. We will not accept defeat. I may have went two steps backwards today, but by golly, I'm going to go one step to forward tomorrow even if it kills me. We have to keep moving forward. We don't accept defeat. We pray. We call our brothers and sisters to pray with us, to pray for us. We find a way. There's a couple of scriptures. I will turn first to uh, the book of First Peter. Chapter 3 and verse 13. And who will harm you if you are deeply committed to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be disturbed. Who will harm you? If God is with us, who can be against us? You're not alone. So don't feel like you're ever defeated. Who will harm you if you're deeply committed to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. A lot of times when we suffer, it don't feel much like a blessing, does it? But God has a way of using things to make things better. Also, in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, Verse 12, fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life that you were called to and have made a good confession about in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight for the faith. Don't grow weary. Don't accept defeat. You are not defeated. Christ is our Lord and our commander. You can never be completely defeated. So fight the good fight. The third line in the warrior ethos is I will never quit. Similar to accept defeat, but a little different. But I will never quit. So let's look at Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse 9. So we must not get tired of doing good. For we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, we must work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of the faith. We must not get tired of doing good. It can be easy to feel defeated. It can be easy to just want to throw up your hands and quit, especially in the shape the world is today. 
We get tired, we get beat up, we get run down. But don't grow weary. Don't grow tired. We will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Never quit. And then again in 2 Timothy, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is Paul towards the end of his life. He has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. I will come back to that more in a minute, but he never quit. He fought the good fight. He didn't give up. If anybody had a reason to give up, if you look in the Bible at what happened to Paul, snake bit, beaten, imprisoned, shipwrecked, all the things that happened to him, but yet he never accepted defeat. He never quit. He always moved forward. And lastly, most important to us as Christians, I will never leave a fallen comrade. When people fall in battle in their Christian life, it's not necessarily in death like in the military. But it's no less tragic when a brother falls or moves away to the wayside. But Jesus himself tells us in Luke 15, chapter 4, and you all have heard this before. Um, or actually, we'll start in verse 3. So he told them this parable. What man among you? who has 100 sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it. If you're not willing to do the same for your brother or your sister, then how can you call yourself a Christian? We leave no one behind. If they're struggling, it's not our job to judge them and beat them up for their poor choices. It's our job to love them and pray for them and bring them back to the fold where they belong. So they have the protection of the flock. Never leave a fallen comrade. And if you notice, all of these start, all four of these, I will. I will. Nobody's going to do it for you. It's your walk. It's your battle. You have to make the choice to never quit, to place the mission first, to never accept defeat. And to never leave a fallen comrade. I, me, starts right here. And we do that by putting on the whole armor of God, like we've talked before. We prep ourselves for the battlefield. You don't run into battle unprepared. If you do, it's going to be short and brutal. I can promise you that. That's the way life is. It's going to knock you down really hard and really fast if you don't prepare yourself. And then if you don't do the preventive maintenance, if you don't work on yourself, if you don't study God's word, if you don't spend time in prayer, if you don't maintain yourself as a weapon of spiritual warfare, then you're going to be ineffective. Then you're going to feel like you're always defeated. You're going to want to quit because you're not prepared for the coming battle. Most battles in spiritual warfare are like physical battles of the army. You spend hours and hours and hours and you prepare and nothing happens. And then just a few short bloody minutes and it's over and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what just happened? You know, when that phone call comes or when you get news from the doctor that you didn't want to get, that's not stuff you think you're prepared until it happens. One thing we've always learned is that no battle plan ever survives first contact. When you make that first contact, it's all out the window. Everything you thought you had laid on just suddenly is not there or it doesn't work the way you wanted it to work. And there's not much you can do except prepare yourself through prayer, through Bible study. So when that day comes, 
We have the strength to stand. We must move forward and not grow weary as a church. Even though the world around us is beating us up, calling us narrow-minded bigots, we're full of hatred. You know, that, that really bothers me because they are judging me. You don't know me. And yet you're saying I'm a bigot and I'm a racist and I hate people. How can you say that when you don't even know anything about me? But that's just the way the world is. So how we respond to that will say a lot about our walk. The battles that we pick. You've all heard the phrase, pick your battles. Sometimes you can pick your battles. Sometimes they're chosen for you in a place and time when you're not really ready to fight them. But that's why we prepare. So that in that time, maybe we can hang on just enough, come out bloody and bruised, but we made it. So we must move forward and not grow weary. We must fight the good fight, like Paul says. We must finish the race. And as he says at the end, and receive the crown that was prepared for me. A lot of times on deployments, there's what they call the end of tour or end of mission rewards or awards. For all Christians, we'll have one too. You're given a crown of life. Nobody can ever take it away from you. Wouldn't it be good in that final day that if you've prepped yourself, you've maintained yourself, and you've lived by the good book to hear Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the strength you give us each and every day. Lord, we know it is a battle here, a battle against the flesh and the spirit. And Paul says that we do the things we don't want to do, and we don't do the things that we want to do, and that's just the nature of our fallen world. We need you each and every day, Lord, and we need your strength to get us through these battles. You are a commander-in-chief that loves us all, Lord, that cares for each and every single person in his army. Give us the strength, Lord, to be the salt and light we need to move your army forward, to stand up in the face of adversity, to persevere when the going gets tough. Thank you again for blessing our little church, Lord. I pray your hand upon each and every member, those that are here and those that are watching and listening. May you touch their lives. May you strengthen their hearts. And may your peace that passes all understanding fill them up, Lord, each and every day. Let them not grow faint. Let them not grow weary. Let defeat not touch their hearts. Let them move forward in faith and hope and look forward to the promise that you have given to us of eternal life. We humbly ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.